welcome to the to the session guys um, very interesting and important topic under pro production and uh, operations management capacity capacity planning yeah um, as you must have heard this term before capacity in various uh, areas various in various um, situations capacity so but particularly speaking in production and operations management this terminology becomes extremely important because you can argue that almost all the functions under production and operation management somehow they will be linked with the with the with this concept of of capacity so for example when as uh, grant was speaking about um, a strategy in one of the sessions not the last one i think the the one before she was speaking about strategy and strategic objectives and linking it with with other things um, um, in production and operation management if you guys all so when you are thinking about your strategy in that time also you are also paying attention to the capacity of your operations in various dimensions for example you the place you have the plant uh, the warehouse the machinery equipment um, the labor you have and then within the labor their attitudes their training uh, the skills they have and of course the financial situation of your company all of those things uh, time available uh, all different types of resources when you are making your strategic objectives you are thinking about your capacity so maybe you you are trying to aim high in your strategy and you are trying to achieve some things which 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 are maybe bigger than uh the current capacity you have that also happens and that is fine also but then uh it would be part of your strategy to build capacity yeah capacity building all of those things uh related with improving increasing your capacity for example this course this interaction which we are which we are doing you know um uh, we why are you doing this 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 degree in in one way you can call it you are building your capacity in terms of your resume resume's reach or the type of jobs you can apply yeah so this is part of capacity building for you same for me uh, like we had had a little type of negotiation going back and forth and all of those things um um they they also even these type of small interactions these small interactions uh um Uh, i was deliberately you know uh, engaging with uh, with this type of negotiation back and forth uh, but only one or two people were actively you know saying saying things others were maybe not not saying anything and you know think about this there are why those people who are not saying something uh, why they were why they were quiet what were the things going on on in their in their head and the and the person who was who was like couple of friends were you know uh, saying okay increase the time and this and and then other people were thinking about other things like if the if the exam time is increased okay uh, maybe the test bank is going to set to be a harder question than some people would have problem with that they might after exam they might say the exam was very extremely tough and then other people might say maybe it was not tough all of those things and then different people were thinking about different things in their own head uh, in operation management when you are thinking about capacity in terms of in terms of let's say negotiation in terms of securing raw material these type of things you would have to go through with your suppliers because then supplier would have some inf let's say i am your supplier in this situation where we were having a little type of negotiation i was your supplier and you were co the consumer you wanted something which is time in this more and based on based on my situation which maybe i am not even telling you everything uh i had some restraints and based on that we had a little conversation and maybe decided something which which maybe for you is more more favorable and so on same type of things you would do in operations management 
in 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 managing your operations for example let's talk let's use some of business example to make the point clearer what i am trying to say so you are you are a you are a business you are trying to source raw material any raw material you are trying to source and uh, the 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 supplier is giving you some type of discount so he says that if you buy x amount i will give you discount on that so based on the receiver which would be you guys you have to think that okay this 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 sounds very good this sounds very good uh this is very very good proposition i am getting discounted price earlier i had to pay 100 for each piece now i will be paying if i buy in bulk i am getting the discount and i am only paying 50 50 for every piece so from 100 if i can buy in bulk i will be getting 50 as a as a rate yeah so now you have to look at first your own capacity like do i have the warehouse where i am going to place it what is the consumption level of this product this raw material uh, will i be able to use it, use it in the in the time frame looking at the shelf life of the product and so on yes on the other hand i am i as a supplier if the good suppliers uh when they give discounts when they give discounts they also think about these things good suppliers they ask the ask the consumer that okay i am giving you discount and you might be very excited about this and you might want to take benefit from 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 this but uh, but what is your consumption what are you if if that product is being wasted how are you going to deal with that uh all of those things because i am your i am your supplier if the product get wasted in your warehouse because you don't have capacity to store it then uh, it is my name my reputation which is going to go down also so i have to think about that also uh so this type of things that, but then maybe the consumer might think that oh he he is maybe making excuses and this and that so because they don't have the full information and so on so forth yeah we have to think about these things uh, in terms of in terms of in terms of capacity um uh very very interesting and important pointers to reflect on uh and this happens you know in general in general life and uh i can share one one mistake or one one event where i always overlook this this thing so uh i enjoy eating eating bananas and uh, um uh whenever i am buying on the road side of course i am trying to get a get a better price and most of the times i am able to get it uh if if the 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 seller says if you buy this much i will you know i will um, i will give you so if i am if i am asking for three or four bananas because that is what i would be able to consume in in uh, in one time he might say okay if you buy two dozen i will give you you know this much price and and so on and i am always tempted to buy the two dozen thinking that the price will be become better for me but then many times i don't i don't consume them and they many times get get wasted and stuff like that you can think in your in your uh, buying uh, also buying behavior so um, is yes grant you want to say something yes sir so what it is before why you didn't and and it goes back to what you were saying storage you weren't thinking because you're thinking this is a everyday fruit or whatever you're on thinking about storage because there's so much things you could do with the bananas you could you could freeze it you could use it to make your shake so you end up not um incorporating any mm -hmm. wastage so a lot of us don't think about the storage mm -hmm. in, in 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 what you're saying the whole capacity of you think of buying bulk you have to think about storage you have to think about bulk saving money and end up not wasting it it's just typically like if your investment mm -hmm. um um when you want to to mm -hmm. say you want to save for a particular item based on your salary you have to budget eh mm -hmm. and how you budget you have to buy resources yes. Where you can save X amount of money per month to achieve your targeted, 
your targeted um, aim to purchase whatever mm. goal you are at. How are you going to achieve that? Meaning that you have mm. to find ways and mechanisms and how to get cheaper stuff, good value, cheaper stuff. It has to change. Your mindset has to change. Where you're going to think of innovative ways. If I buy in bulk, which is at a cheaper, which is retail, how am I going to store? Mm. store? So even when I was on the front mm. line and telling customers, there's so many mm. for, for customers to want to buy your product and for investment. You have to teach them and give them the tools for them to save. How am I going to teach them how to save? When I tell people to go to the coronation market and buy how much yam, I have to tell them how to store the yam. Right, mm. I have to tell them a lot of things for them to buy in those retail mm. customers to save a 500 here and there. Instead of telling them, instead of you eat two pieces of chicken every day for your dinner, use one piece of chicken for your lunch and one for your dinner. So you have to find mechanism in guiding people in how to achieve their goals, basically. Mm. Mm, beautiful, beautiful examples from practical daily life things which we go through all the time, uh, buying stuff from Coronation Market and so on, these type of things. Uh, we have to think about which I really, which, which Grant used is, is the mindset. His mindset, I think, is, the, is maybe for me, you guys can think what is the keyword for you everyone thinks differently but for me i think this this term mindset that is i think the key takeaway when you are thinking about capacity when you are negotiating with with the with the with the people who are giving you raw materials and the example i i tried to um, give you a while ago because many times in negotiations you know you you win uh, you win uh, you win your you win by argument and uh, you come out of negotiation that you might think that you have won. You have won in, the, in that negotiation. You come out of with that feeling, especially for us because we are, we are understanding operations management. So please uh, think about that. You are in a negotiation and the other part, party might do what you wanted them to do and uh, you might think that you are the winner and you came out smiling and but you if you if you maybe you have lost maybe you have lost uh, you don't maybe realize at that time um, and think about think about negotiations uh, i'm drifting a little bit because of the example i gave and it is linked with negotiation and then how our our class also uh, also started think about it in your daily personal life when when uh, when uh, you were talking with some someone and they were arguing with you and then at the end you just said all right i will i will do what what you are telling me but think think you know what was going on in your heart uh, what were your sentiments uh, the relationship you had with them do you think it is the same relationship or it got some type of dent or something so many times we think that when we win the argument and other parties doing what we ask them to do, we feel like winner, but many times that is not the case. So we have to be very mindful not, about, about not, that, not, that's especially not the case in operation. Today, though, Tashveen. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. Not at all. I not at all. Not at all. You're, because, because, because sir, yes, yeah, I hope that could mean. Sir, I hope. I hope. I hope you're not at all. that you're upset with me, sir. <laughs> not at all. Not at all. Not at all. Not at all. What I'm, what, what I'm, what I'm, what I'm trying to maybe say is that uh, increasing the time to 24 hours is going to make the questions extremely hard, and maybe, maybe you can do it, and maybe Grant can do it. But I have to think about everyone that the. Uh, that the questions are not very hard for for people, uh, but anyways, uh, we have passed that, passed that. So so think about these things, um, 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 please, uh, in term of in term of capacity planning and the examples which which Grant gave from practical life. I'm sure, I'm sure you 
you can relate with with those many things are coming in my mind but i don't want to spend time on that i would like you to think about these things um so earlier on i was trying to say that uh, capacity so maybe your strategic objective is a little bit you have set uh, set it a little bit higher and maybe your maybe your capacity is not uh, uh, that high yet so then you would have to think about uh, capacity building so you would be you would be maybe you are trying to incorporate new characteristics in your product so who is going to work on those products you would want some workers so do they have that type of uh, capacity uh, in them to do that type of job um, for example uh, let's talk about um, um, buying clothes so you go to you go to um, let's say lease fifth avenue to buy some shirt or something like that and uh, you go there with the intention of buying shirt and that is what you want but you end up buying more because the seller is uh, good in their job and they can do link selling link selling so because you bought a shirt they will say oh you you might want some trousers with it and maybe you want a pair of shoe with it and maybe you want some socks with it and maybe you want this and so what is that you went into you went in to buy just the shirt but you are coming out uh <laughs> yeah so they 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 try to they try to do this type of things and um uh, now this this all of this is linked with the with the with the strategy let's say the strategy was to increase sales and uh, the mechanism Uh, grant also used the term mechanism if you are listening carefully what she said so mechanism is maybe link selling link selling and then you to do to achieve that strategic objective uh, through the mechanism of link selling you would want different type of customer reps those those customer reps who are really interested um, in uh, selling you um and uh, they can uh, they can maybe read your mind and those type of things and when you come in they try to you know see but on the same on the same hand they should not annoy you also because i'm sure you have you have seen that you go to you go to a shop and the person is all the time on your head and maybe you want some time to uh, look around and uh, so they should be giving you space also so all of these characteristics in terms of capacity in the sales rep they are not just going to come uh there there has to be they should be interested in their job they must be satisfied happily ha- happy in doing their job they must be okay with their salary work environment all of those things need to go together for them to uh, show this type of behavior and then they use other type of uh, uh, you can call them supports uh, uh things which support mechanism which was link selling uh, for example if you if you hit this much target you will be given uh, this much uh, uh, um, uh, some extra money or some you know extra perks and privilege whatever if you are if you are hitting the target incentives yes different type of incentives for that and it is not just i gave you example of clothing but different banks different insurance agencies they all different type of banks do the same thing different type of manufacturers do the same thing you just have to think about think about this yes grant you you are raising your hand please go ahead sir i got the point that you brought up about selling and you what you don't want a lot of person yeah. when it comes on to sales they really really don't understand the fundamental aspect of sales whereas you start one you need to observe you don't overcrowd persons if it yeah. is that you're going to target persons sometimes it's some to me cold 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 soliciting business sometimes don't work sometimes it's referral and even when sometimes you get referrals <laughs> you have to do your study yourselves 
right? And get some idea of the type of person, yeah. what a person likes. So da, 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 da. It's a whole host of things you take into consideration, as well as when persons are in stores. Instead of you bombard the person, look, watch the person when the person comes in. Look to the different sections that the person is going. Look and see what, are, what fascinates them. Then when you observe, then it's because you would have had a com competitive advantage of already knowing what you think you anticipate certain because certain type of behavior that you you normally you normally see store so the thing for me what persons fail to understand is being thorough and being strategic and being observant and sometimes when you're even speaking to a client or soliciting business you need to look you start think of what type of personality type and then you change your strategy. By the time you start a particular sales pitch a particular way, then you ask, when you certain questions, you see how they respond. If it's, it could be an analytical person. An analytical person don't want no fluff. Don't come to them with any fluff. If you're going to tell them, in fact, it's a whole host of things. It's have, you, you have to learn. It's a psychology aspect of it. It's not all about sales. It, it involves psychology. It involves being thorough. It involves being very observant. And also, it involves investigative, investigative sales strategies. Mm, excellent, excellent points, and uh, thank you very much, Grant, for this. Again, um, you always try to, you know, support the discussions and give very good pointers from real life. Um, and this, this point, I really first earlier point was mindset, and from these things which you said, this point about about observing, like the example I was giving a salesperson in a in a clothes shop. Um, if I am going in, what type of colors I am touching? So if I am touching light colors, maybe that salesperson do not like light colors. Maybe they like dark colors in their for themselves, or that is their preference. But if they see me touching light colors, that that tells them that that is where I my mind is at that point in time. So uh, these type of things, uh, good good salespeople would want to do these type of things, of course. But then far from the business uh, point of view, uh, to, to bring that type of uh, those, uh, to have uh, customer reps who have those skills, who have that capacity to engage the consumer, what would it take? Um, that is now uh, something to really reflect on. Uh, and that is why, generally speaking, we complain about, you know, we complain about customer service, even from the businesses which are which are very good in our local environment. They are doing pretty well. They are household names. Uh, we like those businesses, um, and they are offering great products also. But somewhere the customer service part that kind of lags behind. Uh, they are increasing the capacity in all different types of areas in terms of marketing, in terms of improving the quality of the product and, and so on, other things which we have been discussing in, the, in, this, in, this, in this course and the things which you will look in the, um, in the recorded sessions uh, for the future, future um, uh, topics. Uh, but somehow they, somehow they miss this, this part of customer uh, engagement in terms of customers do uh, the 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 customer service reps they do not have the capacity to really engage uh, the the client in a in a good way and i'm sure you have experienced that you go to a good pay place where you like the food but you don't like the like the customer service um, so why is it that these businesses do not do not put some attention to building capacity of their customer reps or anyone who is engaging with the clients. Customer rep is maybe, a shop, does not have a bigger scope. But I'm trying to say that anyone from the business who is trying to engage with the, with the customer, uh, many times businesses do not spend a lot of, lot of energy in uh, fine tuning their capacity and so on. Uh, and then there is a, there is a backfire because of that. Um, yeah, so many times you you would have to think about your own experiences now. Think about the think about the product or services which you like generally, but because of not having good uh, good.
good customer customer repo as a customer you are not getting um, good good service when you are talking with the business um, for any reason uh, think about it what what you go through and what what is your sentiment about the business so what i'm trying to say is that as a operation manager maybe you are working inside the plant uh, to improve the product and so on but as you rise high in your ranks you should also take interest in how is the customer uh, customer related um, um, the how is the how is the how are the customer reps uh, how are the merchandisers uh, the people who take your product to different areas let's say in jamaica there you know they have the vans and they carry the products and how are their relationships with the with the with different businesses of course there is a if i am if i am a merchandiser for grace kennedy of course uh, the com- wherever i will go people would want to talk with me and so on and that is not my uh, relationship building with those businesses that is what that is the that is the brand grace kennedy uh, so anyone who is <laughs> representing them they are going to get some type of engagement from the from the shops sir but outside of that yes please terry um would 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 you say that capacity building um depends on you like build training training your 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 staff on a consistent basis as you grow as you as you ad- advance as you um move forward at every point in time Very good. to the train is it like training to to to, to build on your skills in how to not only with the product but also the people would it be in that um line of thought as capacity building would you say that very good very good thanks thanks for thanks for including that terry i appreciate it so and then you would see that you know there are some businesses who are who are investing in their in their in their, in their people uh, and maybe saji core is is one of them uh, because i see uh, like uh, they they advertise in newspapers i was looking at sunday newspaper and they they had a little you know a small advert that this is the this is the this is the person this is the manager for the month or for the quarter and those type of things um so Sir. yes please grant Sorry, who just mentioned something a while ago who just spoke earlier a uh, terry terry terry, terry you know terry that you have a good point there but however though you know when you look at the wider picture though especially if you want person to sell your product if you don't you could have trained you could have trained people till tinbok too you could have reward people till tinbok too if they don't have the right personality type and gradually love what they're doing sales you will not achieve the goal that you as an organization that you need to achieve if you don't have the right sales team and that is but, something but, i'm telling you but, which so you know, is good for sales I don't want you to just focus on just sales. I'm talking on a general point of view. Where okay. Okay. business. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. okay. 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 But it's good to training is mm-hmm. training is on a, on a whole in any organization and its staff. But it also takes it into 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 play to your where your strategic initiatives and where the type of company that you want to have because you you hire certain type of persons and they are not on the same premise that your company is going. So it also it also ties into the type of person that you're employing in line with your strategic objectives as well. Some persons want to be hiring a lot of young persons, a lot of innovators, and all those things. You know, mm-hmm. right? Let me tell you something. What I am. This is my um. This is my team. If you're going to be in a business and you want a certain team, you understand. Get go. You are going to be sitting. You are going to be choosing. You understand. You're going to sit down with your HR manager. You're going to sit down with with your your, your different different heads of department, and you know exactly who you're pinpointing, what you want. So um, way forward, we don't have these hiccups because of what we are planning. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Is is true, Terry? Is what you do? What a lot of organizations are not doing. 
when they're hiring persons to do the job, the HR manager, whomever, whomever it is, it's when they're hiring it not necessarily in line with the strategic objectives of the organization. And you're absolutely right. And that is where you end up having a lot of hiccups because some persons, when they go into some organization, the staff themselves, when they see a client comes in, they don't even, they, they'll pass the client in the foyer and don't even say good morning because m most of these type of persons are Grinches. They're not, they're not culture in a particular way. So it, it ties back to the type of culture that you want to own in your organization and how you treat your people. And that and, is, and in our culture, no people are like employing their brother, their friend, their sister, and not according to what a business want. Um, there's a word mm -hmm. for those when you when you when you when you um nepotism yes when you're trying to um employ persons that is that that you are relation with you are in relationship with instead of sure. what, what the business really wants this is what is probably killing us some of the stuff then that is happening in our business especially in jamaica as far as i'm concerned that is hmm. thanks thanks for the pointers let me let me let me build on 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 what you guys were saying and try to focus on maybe operations manage management so so you guys mentioned training yeah training so that is that is very interesting so training uh, to improve capacity building so i just ran this google google search um, you should be able to see it on the on the screen uh, please look at your screens so i just wrote this training does not work harvard business review and this is the article which which i which i found uh, I have read this article before. It it came in my mind as you guys were talking about different pointers. Um, and thanks for that. Uh, when you guys talk, it helps me to think about other things and uh, which I might have read in the past, but maybe they were not in my mind. But because you are talking about it, so they just come in mind. So thanks very much for always. Uh, um, giving some type of feedback okay look at this harvard business review why leadership training fails and what to do about it companies spend billions on programs that do not pay off they do not pay off so this thing uh, you can now read the article in detail the point i want wanted to make is that um please think about this uh, training uh, does it really train people or or not uh, when you when you are training someone uh, how much training is really required to maybe you know uh, get that person person trained or in other words some of you are doing change management also this semester so how much training is is required to change the behavior of of a person and grant gave an example a simple example of saying greeting good morning or whatever those type of thing and then and then uh, uh, you know grant also mentioned that you can train some people a lot and uh, pay them well and do all those things but maybe the person is not fit for the job for some other reason it does not mean that they are not good workers or they have to fit with the with the with the job job fit yeah so i can be very knowledgeable and i know that the topic of the discussion and so on but but whatever job i am doing like i am trying to facilitate that cl this class can i do can i do facilitation also if i cannot do that then then i might be well read but i am not fit for the job so as a person maybe a good person but for for the fitness of job maybe then i am not fit for the job yeah so this 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 is this is good you guys mentioned that this nepotism and uh, all other things these are these are maybe evident in in our society in jamaica but please be rest assured that this is not <laughs> just our problem this is essentially a problem of developing countries so any developing country you would want to look at these same problems which you are finding here in jamaica you are going to find those same type of problems particularly in developing in developing countries and that is the that is one reason why they are why they are developing countries but you need to read about this now like training we are talking about capacity and from capacity we diverted to human capacity and from there we gave some examples and then this topic of training came came in 
and for that training i am asking you to do this activity that what do you think about uh, why it works why it does not work try to try to recall your own experiences most of you are working you must have gotten some type of training in your career think about it that training worked uh, or did not work what type of training was it is was it some training which you wanted to do or it was compulsory training for for the staff and you had to go and did you when you had to go did you really learn uh, maybe not because <laughs> you were just there because you had to it was kind of a tick tick box for you you just had to take it that okay i i went there uh, on the other hand if you are really enthusiastic about the, about the job and those type of things then you will train yourself you would always want to read about those things relevant to the job and try to improve your job not because of of any external gain just because of internal satisfaction and those type of things now these things are linked with another course organizational behavior mgmt 2008 you can discuss these things in that one in that one also and then look at this one 2017 harvard business review managers are not doing enough to train employees for the future now as you guys must have realized this topic is very close to my my heart because i think that if we want to be successful in operations production or anything in in whatever we are doing we need to have a look in the in the future how that this this business whatever we are interested in um what would be how it would look in the in the future and from there if we get some understanding of that we need to then build our capacity as human beings as as personal capacity and job related work related capacity and that is essentially the same thing which uh, uh, which these uh, which these uh, production and operation plant managers are doing the same things when they are looking at capacity uh, so so building capacity now you would want to now see how how these things are linked uh, you want to build capacity let's say you want to bring in uh, some new form of technology or equipment in your plant for that uh, you need to increase your sales and uh, to increase sales you have to do some things which are maybe per se not very ethical so as a as a manager as a plant manager generally this is what people do they they cut corners they try to do things which maybe are not very ethical uh but in the in the scheme of things uh they want to decrease the cost of their product and they will do these type of things and you might think that they are not now the the problem with all of this operation manager management is that you you try to catch one side and then you lose on some other side and then you try to catch that side and then some other issue comes in so it's quite a dynamic uh, dynamic job uh, so you have to think about all the aspects in operation man management when you are thinking about capacity um, just like the earlier example i gave you you might get discount from the supplier but then if you did not have the capacity to store it you, it is it is not essentially a discount you are losing it you are thinking that you got the discount but you did not get get the discount and these type of things you would want to over a long period of time you would want to increase your capacity then sometimes people think that you know training we would spend this much this much energy this because it is not just training the the as a operation manager you would have to take interest in the em em employee well being and you have to know them you would have to ask them off the record and on the record you know how is how is the training going how how is your course going and then of course they are going to give you some complaints which might be which might be uh, which might be correct complaints now how to deal with those if you if you solve them then maybe so, there is some there is another end which you will lose if you don't solve them then you are you are your relationship with them is being compromised uh so as terry mentioned a while ago i think 
that is that is that is i think which which we should think about is that in the in the long run um try to build capacity uh in the time when you don't really don't really need it uh try to foresee the situations forecast for example that was one of the topics in operation management so try to forecast uh and then build capacity when you don't necessarily need it uh try to prepare in other words try, try to prepare for the future yeah so these are some thoughts on on capacity let me show you um can you guys think of any example um, before i show you couple of things can you guys think of any example where your business at work or in your personal private life uh you suffered because of not having enough capacity uh, in any regard uh, it can be any business example work example school example um your home example so if anyone can share some example where they suffered because of not having um enough enough capacity yeah yes sir i'm happy they purchased oh, yeah. because it was coming up to the financial year so they had them yeah. pile on each other some break up and by the time they're ready to use the others they drive out very good a simple example but all of us can relate with this uh now go deep in that why did that happen the people who are ordering that pro product somewhere because of whatever reason we are not trying to judge anyone it is just an example and all of us make these type of mistakes but somewhere they were not really they were doing it because they were maybe thinking it is not their own uh, own thing it's company's thing and their love of company was not high enough sure. to, because not their money yes tomorrow yeah maybe yeah maybe it is in simple words <laughs> tamara tamara help me with the words is she saying she understood that what i am trying to say is that it's not their money so they said never mind let's let's do that so so see what how these topics are linked like having showing your your worker that you care about them showing your worker that you appreciate them and you want them in the job and they are showing them some type of love affection outside yes you are paying them they have the job yes but having some type of personal rapport uh and if the if if you if you if your worker feels some type of association with the company then maybe these type of things would would still happen but maybe they will not happen because they are thinking about the company they are not thinking it is someone else else uh, someone else uh, else job and and so on so they are thinking about they uh, they are thinking about the benefit of of the company also so so as a operation manager i think as you are working on the capacity you should think reflect on this also if it is possible for you you should should try to do activities um uh, uh, which which would make your workers think that that you care about them It's building on um, emotional intelligence too sir oh yes <laughs> yeah you can look at the way you want um, it's very important and again it is linked with with negotiation and like as a operation manager i have seen it many times like um, operation manager is hard on the worker and they are having some discussion and at the end the operation manager comes out of the discussion thinking that they won but they did not they did not really won uh the worker might not say something to them directly but they can sabotage the rep the reputation the of the of the operation manager of the or the business i'm sure you must have seen these type of things people keep sometime it, it's not a good practice as as terry saying one should be emotionally intelligent and take the take the discussions as discussions and don't make them personal but i'm sure you have seen this that people do keep grudges and those type of things that's why one has to be very careful 
and then now this all of this capacity building is now linked with the culture of the of the business organization and and so on so this is how i am thinking about it you guys now take liberty in the way you want to think about capacity you can think about capacity in terms of uh, future technologies you can think about uh, capacity in terms of increasing the size of warehouse and so on those type of things even relationship a good having good relationship with the suppliers and also your competition having good relationship with your competition is also you are trying to build your capacity uh, please make a note of this this line because maybe it is it is not really making sense though. so the line is that having good comp a good relationship with your competition when you have good relationship with your competition you are in a way you are increasing your capacity yeah so uh, let me explain this when you have good relationship with your competition uh and you are some um some grocery store or something like that but you have good com good relationship with your with your competition and there is some time when you are short of some product now yes you have suppliers in other countries and they will supply that product but it might take time and maybe it is one of the essential items like like milk or sugar or eggs these are kind of essential items because most of the people consume these type of things whatever the essential items based on the culture of the of the country they the these type of shops they don't want to be short on these these things and if 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 they have good relationship with the competition the 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 managers always call their 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 competition and ask them that okay dude, i'm short of sugar do you have extra please send me and you they will they will send they will send uh, i've seen it myself uh, we think that these supermarkets are different but uh, many times they are friends with each other and that is how it should be uh, because then it becomes very same thing is for the banks same things for okay. other type of business i was just going to go where that is concerned in the financial in, um, industry yeah that, please uh, go ahead please go ahead, um, please go ahead. Sense, even though we are competing against one another we trade amongst ourselves because at the end of the day at the end of the day yeah. we're selling the same product and yes we share we share the profits on some deals because we trade and not only that too we may have a similar customer and we need to share information on the on that particular customer to see what we are aiming for. I'm just giving an example. Just, you know, what, whatever it is, we get a cut of both. We can share a cut of the pie. Even though we're competitors, we trade amongst ourselves. And not only that too, we are regulated by the same regulators. So therefore, if it is that you are short certain funds, just giving a, an example in the financial sector, that you are short... Yes, you would need your brethren to fund your account yeah and your brethren willing to fund your account overnight so if you weren't good competitors and they know they have the funds if you don't have a good type of relationship they don't want to place the funds with you so it is a whole host of things even though you're com you're competing against each other it's a healthy com in any business on a whole, as you mentioned in the supermarket industry, as you mentioned, because guess what? At some point in time, you're going to be at a disadvantage and I'm going to need you and vice versa. And that is also nice. help. Mm, excellent examples from, from financial sector. And um, thanks for adding that because if I'm saying it, you know, maybe some friends would say that maybe that does not happen. But if it comes from one of you guys also, it it uh, the argument becomes a little bit solid because we are thinking on the on the same lines so please think about this uh, this reminds me about something which which i i can't really recall who said it to me but someone close in, in close to me they said it to me that and they are in business so they said that never let uh, never let uh, relationships go bad in uh, in business uh, many times you would you would listen to things which you don't like and many times people will say you know something you know which you don't really maybe you are not maybe you are not that 
but they are thinking differently about you for one reason or another but try your best that the relationship stays there don't let relationship uh, go bad um uh, there is a saying i was reading somewhere online it is coming in my mind i i can share with you with you guys that you know don't uh, don't so win back to what Ter is Terry mentioned emotional intelligence it goes yes back yes back. yes it's all boys yes, yes. if you're not emotionally intelligent if, whether <laughs> you hear a, a situation and you think it deems as being as being criticizing you it can come from a place yeah. a, a constructive place so it's how it's how yeah. you perceive it or if you look if you look at it as you say it's only negative and most often times it is not and sometimes we too, yeah. as, as individuals we don't do internal intra, um, um, retrospection or whatever introspection yeah. and, and realize that the person is telling you the truth and they're coming from a good place and, and matter of fact too sometimes you think yeah. that negative comment is bad it only to me sometimes yeah. when you get a negative comment it makes you only stronger because when you're coming back you're gonna come back good you're not gonna let that person yeah. have one upon you so it is it is how you take it and emotionally intelligent about it as Terry alluded yes 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 and you guys might agree that you know emotion um, uh, emotional intelligence most of us most of us we, we don't have that because we do get angry and we do get upset and in hindsight we might think that we should not have been angry or we should not have said that or but then so what is that in that moment we lost our emotional intelligence and almost all of us do that so it is again working 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 progress that uh, quote i i read somewhere i would want to share with you i don't remember where i read it but it was it was something like that that don't win don't win don't win a, uh, an argument and lose a friend don't win an argument and lose lose a friend so these uh, as a for friend i mean your competition your your people you are competing with um because many times especially in super supermarket and and the other example which grant gave about financial institution uh, a manager who is not who is maybe new in the field or they are not well versed with the dynamics changing dynamics of various businesses uh, they might not want to help the competition thinking that they will take the customers but in the longer run any manager who helps the competition i personally have not seen seen them lose the little i have seen i have never seen a manager operations related manager if they help the competition to lose i have never seen that they always they always win in the short run and in the long run yeah so maybe maybe we are going too much into into capacity so but think about these things think about your own own experiences how capacity is linked with various aspects in operation man management try to build capacity before you would really need uh, um in your personal private life in school wherever um uh, you want to think about and also think about you know um like tamara gave us one example but i'm sure all of you have some examples but if you don't want to share in the session that is fine but at least think about this that think about the instances where um you yourself or your company got a loss because you did not had the capacity at the right time at the right space where you needed it you did not have the capacity so never be in a situation where where you you are in a situation where you don't have the capacity to deal with that situation as operation manager always try to look ahead and try to plan prepare forecast um other topics which we have been talking about and then see what 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 can be done and i think that is that is what you might want to do any so other example gonna, anything yes i was going to mention to i had an, have an example to just for me to as well and it takes certain things to happen to you to really yeah. <laughs> yes because i for me personally i would i'm into fashion clothes shoes you name it and yeah the amount of shoes i have 
And at the end of the day, most of it dry rot because <laughs> you're not wearing. <laughs> no, it's the truth. And it, 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 it goes back that you have to say, you know what? You have to really stop and think and say, how much black shoes you're going to have? How much of this color you're going to have? Yes, different design, go for different outfits. But at the end of the day, though, it is a sin. You waste all this money, your shoes dry rot. And at the end of the day, you have to really think and, and put your mind at a place. You have to reach a level in your life that you say, you know what? This money that I'm doing all of this, put it towards charity. Instead of spending mm. and all of these shoes and all of these things. But I guess the older you get, you live and you learn and where your thought process is and where your mind, your mindset is. Mm place where you know that you have been there and have done that and you know at a place at a place of giving and what what's your thought what is what is meaning to you in life at this point in life is mm -hmm. those things are do you know or is it meaning to helping someone that is less fortunate is it that you really need so many shoes no it says all mm -hmm. about the growth stage that you are in your life in certain things where capacity mm -hmm. building because i don't have a yes i may have place to put the shoes but there's no, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't have the capacity to retain the texture of the shoes for the shoes not to dry rot. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, yeah, you may put it in box, you may spray it, you may, but at the end of the day, it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Very, very simple, but very interesting example. And we, if, if we, can't, we can't relate it personally, we have seen other people doing the same thing. And Tamara is also talking about her, her niece and, and so on. And many times uh, Grant would agree that she might have bought a shoe and maybe did not wear it but after some time the shoe just breaks off because you can't just keep it you have to you have to use it to keep it functional if you don't use it you you kind of lose it and this 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 is now this is the, if you are going to think about shoe business and fashion industry you can think about sustainability with this uh, also based on the example um, uh, grant gave but let me add to what she was saying because some thoughts came in my in my mind because as a as an operation manager in the business your resources would be would be limited no matter how how good the business is doing how how good their books are um, they they are they have good financial situation but still their their money is uh, their finance is is limited so when you are thinking about capacity the business really has to think that in which area uh, they need to build capacity because based on our discussion and even the earlier sessions we had, I'm sure you guys uh, appreciate that capacity is in all aspects of operations man man management. So as a, as the as the owner of the of the of the business or the board or the people who are in the top management deciding. Uh, about capacity building, they also have to think that which which aspect, uh, which in which area they need to build capacity first. How it should go? Uh, what is first thing? What is second thing? What is third thing? Um, Grant spoke about finding meaning in life. That is, I I loved that point. <laughs> we all should try to sit down and find meaning of our lives at that way we want to invest our energy but businesses do the same thing they want to they want to think that in which area it will be best suited for them to build capacity and most of the time as operation manager they would go for building capacity in uh, in um, in putting the raw material, in putting the finished goods, where which space to use to put the finished goods, uh, to find best technologies, all of those things. And but because the finance is limited, by the time they reach to the basic things of having good good customer service, who is going to pick the phone <laughs> when the when the customer is going to call and they are not happy, what happens there? So maybe it is lower on their agenda that is why but then there are some businesses where customer apps are good so very good very good discussion thank you very much for giving your pointers in this one uh, really appreciate it um, i learned a couple of things from your 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 pointers and a couple of things got refreshed in my mind i'm sure all of all of other friends they also you know enjoyed the discussion and they would want to think about um capacity 
in any way they want to uh, think about a uh, uh, couple of examples i would like to show you um for example this one red rocks planning for concerts uh, with much smaller uh, capacity levels um this is a clip um i wanted to show it in session and then maybe discuss it but i think we have uh, done uh, you guys have made good uh, good comment so i'm going to just post it in the chat so anyone who is interested in uh, looking at it they can it's a it's a short uh, it's a short clip uh, you can play this clip and uh, essentially they are talking about concerts and capacity planning and the current situation what is going on in the world and it's a short 2 minute clip so you can can watch it in your own time and look at the words terminologies these people use if there is any jargon don't worry at all uh, run a google search and try to find i was interested in airline industry so i was reading about airline industry uh, in, ter in terms of capacity um but you you don't have to read about airline industry per se uh, you can again you can decide which industry you like which type of businesses you like and where uh, they should be located and if you are if you are interested in caribbean caricom region you can look at caribbean and the industry which you like i was interested in europe and industries airline so i ran google search simple google search and found this so this is very interesting your european airline capacity planning uncertainty is increasing uh, because of the uh, situation in the world also but there are so many other factors uh, what i wanted you to maybe pay attention to that this capacity planning would be dependent if you can read the read the screen as i am talking or just glance through you don't have to read word by word just glance through the screen and try to have a feel of what they are trying to say uh capacity planning would be dependent on a lot of information like the data information uh because as the as the manager you will be dependent on that data that information which you will be given um whether it is suppliers whether it is consumer demands whether it is your storage whatever aspect it is it will be dependent on some type of information some type of data you would look at that information and then you would plan and forecast and try to allocate resources to capacity planning if that information is not correct then of course just like we were discussing in the topic of forecasting then your capacity building would go wrong and you might end up building capacity in a section where it was not needed right now but right now it was needed in some other area and then you might not benefit from the market dynamics and so on yeah so look at this this here like they are giving you percentages uh, they are giving you other information in different regions africa and so on yeah what i am trying to say is data driven uh, uh, capacity is many times data driven so pay attention uh, to that uh, at all sir. Sir. yeah please go ahead all right please on, go ahead on the on the note of um of forecasting some time ago there was a clip that you had put in a previous class that um allowed me to think on the the the, the, the way forward on how persons um get their 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 their, their, their stocks normally persons would have um you know manufacture their goods and put it out there for for audience to, to 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 choose based on you know what they they think but um based on the clip that i have seen and the the person who was this the, the, doing the discussion they say yeah. way forward if you if you way forward no is that persons should think about um customizing a way of customizing how like you know and for me it was a, a big thingy and I'm saying, if I want to do a business yeah. now, um, I would I would go in that area where I develop something where um, I develop something where persons would 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 instead of choosing what 
we have already made, but they what they want according to to what um they, they their needs are their their desires are. So for me, in, in capacity, that's 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 you know from a futuristic point of view, that's that's what I am thinking. Very good, excellent uh, point, Terry. Thanks very much for this point. And you know, it's it's uh, such a coincidence that last night uh, and the night before, I was thinking about the same thing, uh, custom custom building and so on. And I was thinking in my own industry, in my own job, like um, for example, yes, Grant, you want to say something? Please go ahead. Yeah, because that sort of thinking was was always in the financial industry, though. Mm -hmm. because you cannot afford you have to suit the product according to the customer's needs and wants and also when you're qualifying a customer it's very important how you qualify the more you qualify a, a customer and suit the product according to their needs and their appetite the more successful your business are because they know that you are ethical in your standards that's mm -hmm. that's 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 a strategy has been using in the financial industry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the challenge is that the more you are customizing for individual individual customers, maybe the product is going to become a little bit more expensive, but then you are targeting high value clients and so on. Uh, generally speaking, in the financial world, when they are customizing, they are customizing uh, for a set of set of people, set of cohort, uh, and they are doing it generally because uh, minimize their cost. Uh, but then, of course, they also, as Grant is explaining, uh, they have been doing it. And um, But then the lower, lower value client in the banking sector, um, how do they feel about all these things? That's um, why Zadcor is good. That's why our retail customers is treated same as our high-end customers. So they know that they're getting quality service. It is, it is what it is. I'm, I'm being honest. A retail customer is no different from a high-end customers. It is what it is, and it goes back to the service. What about, what about those, um, this field where even right now where we have, um, what's the name of the, 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 that is airlifting things to you? What's the name of the company um, that, that you, you go online and you choose and they bring it to you at your doorstep and all of that you know what a matter of fact do you know i'm glad you mentioned that too because we're forward thinking we we launch our go on the wheels banking to go into those derelict communities where persons can come out to 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 have bank to get those those type of customers that they, they are unbanked i don't so want to say the banking industry or the financial industry i'm talking so for instance the um the fashion industry i want to i want to dress that that looks a certain way and if i can come up with an app that say a, um or create an app or have my, my technical team create an, an mm -hmm. app that, that, yeah. that, that can put the, the, the thing together you understand all my client would do is go online click um, right choose the, the, the style and then send it to us we customize we build it and we send it to you that is basically That's a what good idea terry i think you should you should take that on and run with it i have been doing that uh, trust me and it, you know that it you know what it, we came from it came from tashfin's class while, while listening wow. to somebody somebody um that he gave a clip and i was like really i think i want to run with this <laughs> of course run with it a new innovative idea run with it kudos to you terry where that is concerned kudos to you my darling tap into those areas that you see gaps mm -hmm. and it will bear fruit if you be strategic and you're techno savvy because basically that's where the world is going my darling so take advantage of any area that you see can be fruitful kudos to you very good excellent and all of us should think about these type of act activities as i mentioned i think in one of the session that you should should not just go for a nine to five job and so on we should try to run some type of entrepreneurial activity anything which we can do nothing to really worry if it is small thing like you know terry has is trying to do something other i know a couple of other friends uh, i don't want to mention they are they are right now in the session. They are also trying a couple of things, uh, some type of entrepreneurial activities. I myself try different type of things. So that is very good.
um, that is also part of capacity building as as our as our in in our own personal capacities yes very good um okay so was talking about um, airline industry yeah so i showed you that clip and then look at this one the the future of um, airline routes and capacity planning yeah so these type of so if you are whatever industry you are interested in that would come here the future of let's say fashion industry the future of transportation and capacity planning so you have to run some searches on this and then try to um, read whatever whatever you are interested in um, as i was explaining you earlier i was looking in airline industry so i can share this also with you if you are interested you can read this if you are not interested in airline you can just scan it and read something which you are um, interested interested in taking into consideration the market conditions and environment of course that is again something which we did not speak about today but i am sure that uh, we did speak about something on these lines in the earlier sessions uh, market conditions environment what would be the demand like in the future uh, understanding consumer customer what they would demand in the future um, that 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 is if someone can figure that out and build capacity in that that would be amazing like think about it like if someone could could think about hand sanitizers before covid just before covid maybe couple of months ago and then they are they have they are building their capacity in that uh, they must have taken advantage in that time uh, but then you can argue that uh, how would they know that this pandemic is going to come and so on uh i did not know that this would come uh maybe you also did not know but but after afterwards when i started reading on uh, uh predictions about uh, what are some of the things which can go wrong in the world uh by top scholars in the field they were telling us about this that something like this can come and it won't stop because of excessive transportation between countries and so on so they were talking about it but we were not paying attention to that uh nowadays for example if i if i ask you that forecast what would be what are the next challenges coming out from from this situation where we are in uh, in the world if someone like pandemic and all of this if someone want to build capacity in some type of knowledge what type of knowledge it can be so based on your interest it would be different i was just reading this article that next thing which is going to go yes grant please go ahead well capacity for me with this building capacities is is i hope the local industry we are building mask build capacity because i have to go online to get what i want in a different type of mask because eventually for me mask is going to be a part of fashion and so for me yes, having yes, different yes. type of mask put whatever clothes you are having on and i'm telling you eventually most persons even even if when we get um, vaccinated persons are still going to wear mask and becomes a part of fashion yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. that is very very interesting uh, uh point to to think about uh because our friend is saying even after vaccination uh people are going to uh keep on wearing these type of these type of masks and there are quite a few fancy fancy masks uh you just have to run some google search and you are going to find um very interesting uh, very interesting uh clips on that um i saw this one uh, the only thing sir yeah. it is it you have it here but it is for persons to survive with this mask it has to be it has to go with what you know will last and persons are always yeah. especially young people they're still even they're at, they're still into fashion how is it that you're going to get that market excited into fashion and what they want to wear and what looks good because regardless of whatever the economy is is 
whether it is an economy with a recession or whatever, people are still going to invest in fashion. Very true, very true, very interesting, very interesting. And it reminded me of this clip. Uh, please have a look. Um, you might like it. Hello? Sorry? My, my mask, it's up. Sir, it's over my nose. Oh, wow, that is too cool. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> it's yeah, so look at this. So he's throughout, he's wearing a mask, but we don't really realize that he's wearing mask. Uh, and then he goes to the desk and the person there says that, wear your mask. And uh, uh, now he pulls it off and he shows him that he is wearing a mask, but it looks like, yeah, see, it looks like his. So they are very interesting and maybe people are going to uh, go there because uh, even now, people think that we don't need a uh, different type of masks and this thing is maybe over and this is going away. But as Grant mentioned, even if it goes away, maybe it is going to, maybe people will continue. Some people will continue sanitizing afterwards maybe just for, you know, just to be careful and so on. Maybe keep on wearing masks. Maybe, you know, different type of people are in, in the world. Maybe you and me will not do that. but some people might do that. So in, so this don't think that there are so many limitless opportunities. It is just that finding something which you like and then build capacity in that over a period of time, just like Terry gave example, uh, and then see how it, how it goes. So future of whatever industry you, you like, you can look into that. Again, I'm not going to go through this one because you might not be interested in airlines. Yeah, so this is this is very interesting. Uh, now thinking about technologies, uh, this is artificial intelligence can improve network capacity planning. And earlier I was talking about data, for example. So uh, where do these companies with a lot of data, where do they store it? Uh, do they build their own capacity or they store it using some other, other ones servers and then maybe they store it cloud, there are different type of businesses which are in that, so they pay them and then they store it. So that is that is one aspect from data uh, data collection. But this one is artificial intelligence; it can improve network capacity. Yeah. So for example, look at this one: uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning provide the ability to precisely predict network needs. Precisely predict. So once you can precisely predict, then you can give the resources where they are needed in the time when they are needed. Yeah. So that would be, I think the modern capacity building would be something like this, that your, that what I'm trying to say is that your plants would be, would be very flexible uh, in terms of, uh, you know, how you are going to allocate different areas. Uh, there might be less, space, but from that less space, you might want to do, uh, a lot of other other things and now this is linked with the other topic which we were discussing the other day uh, design um, plant design and so on you might want to think think about think about that also um, um, let me scan through the the slides if there is anything which i might want to uh, maybe highlight or discuss but I think the major things are are there. Uh, I'm yet to find a store in Jamaica who sells masks via custom custom built ask you for a deposit, etc. It is just not here. It's very this is a this is a great business idea. If someone is interested in this, they just want to, you know, uh, want they don't even have to have a brick and mortar store. Just create an online website. Just create online website and on that you just take the order uh, and ask the customer what type of what type of uh, mask you would want and then give them that type of mask. Either do it yourself. If you can't do it yourself, uh, you would have to uh, speak with other people who are in this business and then maybe find their suppliers, local suppliers. 
um, you can talk with some some tailor or someone who you know they can do the stitching for you maybe it won't be very Sir, good of course it's, it's not just all a start the time go to a dressmaker because i went to my dressmaker and i asked her to build my lace my lace mask but i'm just saying yeah. typical when i went into amars amars have loads of different masks and I bought the different colors and stuff. And then when I started asking them, can their supplier make XXX for me? Oh, yes, they're going to tell them, yes, yes, yes. But they are never, they, it, it, it's, I mean, they, this is where you have a customer willing to spend money to get, to get the product. But it's just not there. Yeah. It's just not there. It really isn't. I have to be seeing persons, seeing persons who, you have individuals who sell masks and whatever. They're choosing a particular material and whatever. And it just not yes. the person, so they're not tapping into those customers like myself who yes. wants yes. not the same thing that everybody likes and willing to step it up a notch because there is mask and there is mask to me if it is in a fashion yes. sense. And you yeah, can yeah. have a certain quality and a certain look, a certain style, a high-end style. But it is what it is, sir. A customer like me, persons aren't tapping into. I have to buy masks online to suit myself. Absolutely correct. Absolutely correct. And look at that. That just by so look, we might think that this is a very simple problem, and maybe it is not even worth discussing. But the way I am looking at it, I think this this might be the most important uh, pointer throughout the last two hours. Because think about it: if our friend is not getting whatever she wants from Amar, she is uh, buying it online, and most likely she is buying overseas from overseas market. So exactly. the money which was the money which was generated in Jamaica that is going overseas for to buy something which could easy easily stay in Jamaica. So that money would it would it would have been better for Jamaica that the money goes from Grand to Amar instead of from Grand to overseas market. And Amar can definitely provide that whatever she is asking them for. But they are not doing it. So why they are not doing it? Many reasons for that. That is why to have a good branch manager operation manager whatever you want to call it in the in the in the given context that becomes very important because i am very sure i have no doubt that if the owner of amar knows about this and he's listening to us right now he will ensure that his business is start give, providing a custom 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 build mask looking at the requirement of the customer i am sure he is going to arrange that because he is the owner, it is his business. He, 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 he would want to increase his sales. And this is, I don't see any point that he, he, he would say that, no, we are not doing no, custom because business. Like if you're requesting for me to pay a deposit, if you're requesting quantity, if I dis decide to say, okay, you will have to order for you, for me to make a custom build stuff, give me your six or seven, the minimum of whatever. You will find customers out there, you have a particular, is which niche market that you're tapping into. And Amars is gonna start closing doors if they're, because persons are buying online. And eventually they're not gonna stay open because guess what, you're not moving. Lasting a capacity building because not everybody eventually, everybody's gonna still, look at where Amazon is. Majority of stuff, um, persons buying on Amazon, what is happening to the local stores? They're having a lot of sales because guess what? <laughs> Their turnover is minimal. And they're not looking, they're not forward thinking and looking to increase how are they going to forecast and increase sales. Start thinking about what the customer, how to tap into those customers who don't want to walk in, want custom build stuff and stuff like that. They might, you, you, you'll be surprised, you'll be surprised that's where people are going online and delivery too. Mm, thank you very much. Excellent, exceptional pointers here. And the operations manager or the branch manager at Amar or whichever store our friend went to, they they are maybe the same mentality as with the example of Tamara. That you know, it is it is not my business. The it's it's minimum sales going on. It's COVID time. Why should I take the hassle of taking the order and then back and forth. And then she knows that she would have to, the he or she, whoever is the manager, branch manager at Amar, they would know that they would have to go back and forth and they would have to write emails and, you know, 
do this and that and so many things they have to go through or they might say all right let's stick with what what we have or there can be some other reasons also but these pointers which our friends uh, mentioned uh, i think you sh you guys should think about these things not necessarily masks per se if you are not interested in mask that is fine but overall on these type of some type of uh, entrepreneurial activity and then building your capacity in that even from small size it has big potential uh, to grow uh, and don't think so many other people are doing the same thing uh, you can always uh, do it the same thing in your in your own way but this example which which grant is 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 giving of course i doubt that uh, we have uh, we have uh, much spaces in jamaica which can build a custom custom mask or which can build a custom uh, sanitizer with the type of scent which we want in the sanitizer now how hard this is if i were if i had a if i had a shop which makes uh, if i had a if i had a plant or something which which would make uh, which would make uh, sanitizers how hard it is for me to start making some type of customer um, custom built uh, sanitizer i don't think it is it is hard the little i know about uh, operations plant manufacturing and, and so on uh, because you can make it in a smaller quantity and uh, <laughs> yeah don't remind me about victoria secret then different type of images start coming in my mind which which are not so suitable for <laughs> our discussion yes yeah so please think about these things um um very important uh, good pointers uh, to think about okay i'm going to look at uh, maybe the the slides uh, they are using some terminologies uh, for example throughput and so on you can look it uh, in your own time they are linking it with the design uh, we spoke about design in in our previous sessions um, they are having slides on capacity and strategy we spoke about it in the earlier part of today's discussion uh, build for change for example they are using some terminologies managing demand yeah demand side what the consumer is demanding and then uh, this example which grant gave just now about the mask that is linked with the demand side of consumer and then there are some other slides but you can i'm sure you can uh, you can look into that in the last ones they are talking about break even analysis what is break even um, you have done it in the in the other courses uh, in the quantitative method courses i think some of you are taking Uh, this term you look at break even analysis in that um it is just a point where you are not making uh, any profit but you are not making any loss also so from there you want you don't want to come below a break even point unless uh, it is it is your strategy or it is linked with something else or you are spending more of your resources in some other area and that for that reason you are coming below a broke a break even point otherwise you want to um, stay above it um, yeah so simple straight forward slides you can look at look at those um, i would like to play a short clip uh, on uh, capacity planning it is 3 minute long uh, please pay attention to it and uh, watch it carefully Hi. Welcome to the lesson on capacity planning. In this video, we will explain what capacity planning is. Then talk about the factors affecting capacity decisions. Capacity planning is a process of determining the production capacity needed by a company to meet changing demands for its products or services. So, the capacity of the production system sets the company's response rate to the market its cost structure its workforce composition its level of technology 
its management and staffing support requirements, and its inventory strategy. Insufficient capacity may result in loss of customers through slow service or by allowing competitors to enter the market. If capacity is excessive, a company may have to reduce its prices to stimulate demand. It may over be overburdened with too much inventory or produce additional less profitable products to make use of the excessive production capacity. So what are the factors affecting capacity? Well, we can break the factors that affect capacity into external and internal factors. The external factors include government regulations, such as working hours, safety, pollution control requirements, two, union arrangements, and three, supplier capabilities. We also identify eight different internal factors, product and service design, personnel and jobs, such as worker training, motivation, learning, job content, and methods. Three, planned layout and process flow. Four, equipment capabilities and maintenance. Five, materials management. Six, quality control systems. Seven, product mix decisions. And eight, management capabilities. Before you proceed with the next video on capacity planning concepts, as an exercise, please see if you can explain in one or two sentences each of the internal and external factors that we have just listed. Thank you. Okay, so I hope uh, this clip, uh, short clip made sense. They kind of uh, gave you a, a brief overview of various dimensions of uh, capacity planning. And uh, most of them, you must uh, must have realized that we were able to discuss them today. And then uh, you, would, you might want to link it with the previous discussions also. And uh, please reflect um, on all of these things. Um, thanks very much.